Well, the Friday morning briefings continue with uh, Eddie Tier, the finance minister, back hot-footed from Japan. Bit of a controversy there about going and missing Timwald, and uh, Mr. Cannon obviously decided there was a bit more to it than that. And is there a conspiracy theory? In Not it? at all, because the questions were directed to the department. There were members for the department there who were able to answer the questions, to be properly briefed, the answers prepared. And uh, really, if the questions had a demanded an urgent response, they should have been left on the order paper rather than just pulled. Uh, and I would say, really, that um, it's just uh, directed at me personally. But we have to raise our profile internationally. Uh, we can't just sort of stay in the bunker and hope that everything will be all right. We've got to get out, got to meet people, and we've got to articulate the Isle of Man's view and how the Isle of Man is an active and proactive player in the international community to raise standards and to do our part, play our part. I don't think anyone disagrees that, but he just had this timeline thing that you could have been back in, in, in answering his questions, I think. Yeah, he could have been. Um, but basically, when you get the original, um, when you get the agenda, um, it's a draft agenda. And uh, it covers the whole of the meeting. The, 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 the draft agenda took you up to Sunday. Now, there were other meetings uh, which weren't on the agenda. They're not published. until, And then when you get there, you get the definitive agenda paper. So then you're, you have a look through, well, what other meetings will I be interested in? Who, who'd be there? And uh, what would be the benefit of those meetings? So having said that, um, I made the decision um, to come back uh, on the Saturday, yeah, on the Sunday morning, um, because there wasn't a great deal on on the Sunday's meeting. So I came back on the Sunday, and then that enabled me to get back into Tenwald on the Tuesday. So if you had left the questions on the order paper, it would have been fine. Well, another item that you're putting out today is that you're not going to charge the smaller planes the air tax increase. And we're talking here, I mean, Manx 2, of course, is the, the carrier we're talking about, I guess, isn't it? I mean, that's the one that doesn't pay because it's 19 seats and below. Well, that's the main one, but there's also business jets who come into the island for one reason or another, and uh, also um, it will help our aircraft registry as well because they tend to be the smaller passenger jets. Give us an idea, though. What would it cost for one of these jets to come in then? Is it, is it a lot of money if, if you put the tax on? It's not a lot of money, but it does add up. Um, if you have quite a lot of rotations, as they call it, coming and going, um, it can add, add up. But um, it's what we're trying to do is to create um, a business-friendly environment to support the aircraft registry. It's just one of the pieces in the jigsaw. It's a tricky one in, in perception, though, because it looks like you're not being a level playing field. I mean, you're giving them a slight advantage, I suppose. I mean, you're still going to have to fly bees and the easy jets and you and me, when we travel, we still got to pay that on a bigger plane. So is it, you know, you're not being quite fair with everybody? Well, I think, I think we are because the bigger planes have the economy of scale. Um, they've, they've only got uh, um, the same number of people on the flight deck, whether, whether you're flying with 19 passengers or 190 passengers, you still got the same number of people on the flight deck. Uh, so um, they benefit from the economies of scale. I, mean, I, I, I take it it wasn't you that obviously brought this in originally, but the, the other man couldn't wait to make a quick another tax. You know, the UK is doing it. We jump on the back of this. It's, uh, it's just like the petrol going up. It's a very easy one for you to get the money in. And don't you need the money? We all need the money to balance our books. But having, having said that, we've got to be careful about what we do. And I think that this is a proportionate response to support our local industry. Got a nice media picture released today of you with uh, Mr George Osborne. Is this your new showbiz mate or political mate, however you want to call him? Well, I don't think it does any harm and hopefully it does a lot of good to, uh, when you get the opportunity, to take it and to talk to these people. And did you sit down and talk with them or was it just a photo opportunity? No, no, it wasn't a photo opportunity. We sat down, talked to him on the opposite side of the table and I was able to explain to him um, how the Isle of Man has always adopted the very highest financial standards. We were one of the first companies on the OECD whitelist many years ago. Uh, we've been reviewed by the Foot Report and other reports as well. And we've always come through it with flying colours. So um, I also uh, mentioned to him that we work with the northwest of England to encourage economic activity and the funds that come into the Isle of Man from clients of the Isle of Man's institutions go into the City of London and that's been a very important source of funding for the city 
But behind you, presumably Jersey and Guernsey are also going to do, this, do the same spiel, aren't they? Uh, Jersey and Guernsey have a, a different pitch because we're not quite as dependent on the finance sector. Only 34% of our economy is the finance sector. They have a much higher exposure to it. We have um, got high technology, manufacturing, space engineering. Uh, so we've got a lot more to offer, I feel. So you left the meeting with phone numbers and contacts? We've agreed that um, I will meet with some of his political colleagues in the, in the near future and uh, the Chief Minister did sp take the opportunity to speak to David Gork at the Conservative Party conference and we're hopeful of another meeting with Mr Gork in the near future. I have met Mr Gork before, albeit very briefly, so I'm hoping now that now we've got the door open we'll be able to build on it and uh, make it clear that the Isle of Man adopts the very highest standards and uh, we want to work with them. I should really ask you, has there been any rumblings behind the scenes of another sort of VAT issue with this? I mean, are you getting any signs from Westminster that they want another grab? Nothing at all. That, to me, is a, a settled issue now. Um, it's just purely technical. The framework has been agreed. It's um, actually how do we count the figures now. Finally, because I know you're, you're really pushed for time this morning, you, you brought out uh, this six-month report. Can you give us the highlight, the bit that is going to stick right. out for people? Yeah, the highlight when they open it and have a look at page one is that uh, at the end of the six-month period, the shortfall was 51 million. That's the difference between income and expenditure. Whereas for the, first, for the whole year, we're only forecasting a shortfall of 55 million. So the obvious question is, how are you going to manage in the second half of the year? Uh, actually, there's timing differences in terms of income tax receipts. The income tax tends to come in in the main at the beginning of the calendar year and also to um, there's uh, differences in the profiling of department spending as well so overall we think that we will still be on target to meet the budget that we set in February this year. Any department not giving you a good report you know uh, going bad? There's no sinners at the moment. But you are keeping a tight control on everyone? Uh, Treasury is not known for taking a relaxed view. Are you, are you, are you going to be relaxed in a year's time? Do you think you know, with this, we've turned a corner? I, well, the economy is still growing. I'm still positive. And uh, whilst I recognise that there are some areas of the economy which are coming under pressure, as a whole, the economy is still growing between 3 and 5% a year. Um, and I feel that we will be able to meet our projections, although it isn't going to be easy.